Hey guys, it's TV Production Guy here with another Final Cut Pro lesson. Today we're going to be talking about audio and how to use audio in the timeline. First thing we're going to do here is I'm going to open up Final Cut Pro. I already have a project set up for us. What the first thing I want to do is show you how to monitor your audio. So I'm going to come up here to the preview. I'm going to play. And I'm actually going to turn the audio off so we don't hear it on the computer. What I want you to notice down here on the left is you can see the audio channel 1 and audio channel 2 lines moving. That's how you monitor your audio down here on the right. We can go ahead and stop this. And I have three examples set up for us on the timeline. Now, I like to visually see my audio. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the audio waveforms on. And if you, you may prefer this too, so I want to show you how to do this. What I can do is I can come to my sequence and I can right click and come to settings. Then come to the timeline options and click show audio waveforms. And now a representation of my audio comes up on each audio clip, audio channel 1, audio channel 2, down here in the timeline. And you can see when it's low audio or when it's higher audio. The other thing I like to click on is show keyframe overlays. And this puts a red line within each piece of audio. So you can either pull it higher for volume or lower for volume. So we can go ahead and we can click OK. And now the first thing you'll notice is that this clip down here to the left has been, it's locked. If I move the channel 1 up, the channel 2 moves up. If I move it down, the channel 2 moves down. So what we can do is we're going to put this back at 0. And we can unlock we can unlock the stereo pair. And you can tell it's locked because it has these double arrows right here in between them. So we'll click on the audio, come to modify, and come down to stereo pair. Now that I've turned those off, I can turn the channel one up, or I can turn take channel two and I can pull that way down or pull that one up too. Again, I'm just gonna bring them back to zero. And the next thing I want to show you is is how we monitor our audio on the timeline. If I just want to listen to audio channel 1, I can turn audio channel 2 off. I can turn the monitoring of it off. I can come over here to the left and hit this green speaker button. And now channel 2 is completely off. And all I'm going to listen to when I hit play is channel 1. I'm going to turn the audio back up so we can hear it. You can tell it's kind of low. And we'll talk about that in a second. But now all I want to do is I want to monitor channel 2 and not have channel 1 on. So what I'll do is I'll turn channel 2 mo monitoring back on by clicking this green button, button and it lights back up green. And I'm going to turn the channel 1 green button speaker off. And now channel 1 is off. So when I listen to this, I'll only be hearing channel 2. Yeah, might be for the um, super thrill seeker. Yeah. Now it's important to realize that when you're out in a shoot, most of the times you're going to have a positive channel and a negative channel. The positive channel being the mic your talent or the person you're interviewing is actually wearing or holding. And the negative channel, which is the microphone, your external microphone on your camera. Now for this particular shoot that we're going to use as an example here, um, they were mic'd up and there was also an external mic. Now the way we decide what channel 1 or channel 2 is the mic and which channel 1 or channel 2 is the external mic is by using our monitoring and figuring it out in, in our edit session. So what I'll do is I'll come to the beginning. I'm going to turn channel 2 monitoring off so we're just listening to channel 1. I'm going to pull this up to about 6 so it's a little bit louder. You can tell that's very low. Now let's monitor put the monitoring back on for channel 2 and turn the monitoring off for channel 1. Now let's listen to channel 2. Again, I'll pull this up to about 6. Now you can yeah. tell that this channel is a lot higher. And it's not just because I pulled up the audio level. It's because that's the mic channel. And I've determined that now. So now when I go to edit, I'm going to know that channel is my positive level and I want to have that one up. And I want to bring my negative level, which is my mic camera, down. Now, maybe you don't have external mics and uh, you're just using the microphone of your camera. That's fine, too. When that audio comes in, and here's an example of that, it also will come in locked. 
but these two channels will be exactly the same, channel one and channel two, as in the audio level and everything, because it's just being recorded from your camera external microphone. So I can unlock these, modify stereo pair, and now they're unlocked. I can bring up channel one and bring down channel two. No eating any Doritos until all the guests are here, all right? This here is actually a, a shot from uh, the commercial I did the, last year for the Doritos Crash the Super Bowl contest. Um, the example I'm showing you here is from the external mic on the Canon, my Canon 60D. Now, I also recorded this with a external mic with an external heart with an external audio recorder, um, the Zoom H4n, and that's where this is how that audio sounded with just channel one. No eating any Doritos until all the guests are here, all right? You can tell the difference of how the mic is stronger. Let's go back and look at example one. No eating any Doritos until all the guests are here, all right? That was the mic, the external mic from the Canon 60D. And now let's listen to the external recorder. No eating any Doritos until all the guests are here, all right? You can tell the external re recorder is a lot stronger. And that's why in a professional situation you would use that. Obviously, if you don't have enough money, you're not going to be using external recorders, and you're going to be using the external mic right on your Canon 60, you know, your Canon or Nikon or whatever you're using. Um, but I just wanted to show you those two examples to show, you know, how they work and, and the difference of them. Let me bring you to my actual Doritos commercial, and you can actually – I'll pull up the video lines here so we don't have to worry about them. And here's actually how I laid my audio out for this. You can see I have a lot of audio up here up top. Looks like I had some sound effects in the beginning. I think that was the crowd noise. Actually, I'll put a link right here in the center, and you can actually go ahead and you can go watch my 30-second commercial and then come back to this. But if we come back to this, I had some natural sound up here. Um, I had our mic channels down on my third and fourth layer. Uh, some more mic channels that I probably had on four and six. And then I had my music channel on four. 7 and 8 audio and some more audio some more music later on in the commercial down on channel 9 and 10 now let's come back to our practice the other one thing I wanted to show you about audio before we finish this up is is audio scrubbing let's come back up into our preview monitor and you can see as I scroll through this we don't we just see stuff we don't hear anything if you're somebody who likes to hear the voices as they're going as you're scrubbing through we can come up to view and check audio scrubbing and now when I scan through I will I will get the audio scrubbing of what I'm scrubbing through some people like this because it'll help them find their ends of the bites they're looking for like so all right, guys, this is TV Production Guy signing off.